the worst part of that dream. Dilapidated. Yeah, and, and she said that was her old house originally. Right. Yes. But then she said there's really no evidence to work out. That was really very I have something more to ask you too. Later. Sure, sure. <clears throat> I have a friend of mine who had been involved in Plato, and he convinced me with the most splendid of all arguments that the two introductions in the symposium you can ignore. So, uh, unless you can persuade me that it's serving some meaningful function, I'm going to cut it out of my book. And I urge you to do the same. And his argument was very simple. It's only decorative. It has no meaning. Hmm. Don't look for meaning in such things as introductions. Okay. It's just decorative. So therefore, uh, we're talking therefore about the problem of structure in the symposium. So, give me some help. All right. I'll give you some really big help. <laughs> Thank you. Because you know what? That's really cheating if we have to deal with that. When you told us to come here prepared to talk about the end of the dialogue. Mm -hmm. No, no. He said both. Uh, I sent out the email. He said both. Uh, uh, and sorry, the that's Dan correct? What are both? I thought we were supposed <laughs> to start at the end. No, wait a while. You're quite right. <clears throat> sort of Socrates. By the way, is there anything comic about the uh, two introductions? Comic. Mm -hmm. Okay, the, just wondered. The, the I'm not sure about what comedy and tragedy is right now, so I'll <laughs> back away from that. So, how shall we deal with it? Shall you go along with my friend's strategy? That is, we just dump the first couple of pages. Mm. And therefore, we can start. Shouldn't we better see what's in the first couple of pages first before we dump it? What? What? <laughs> Go ahead. I was thinking that as a group, we should all take a look at what's in the first couple of pages before we arbitrarily make a decision to dump it. I mean, just because there's two introductions doesn't mean you got to get rid of one just out of hand because every work should have only one introduction. Well, okay. In this text, anyhow, it's, it's 174 BC. <laughs> you might be an artist or something. And in this text, page 72. And, uh, What's that? One could have been a beauty and the other one could have been a beauty. See that sentence? So after some talk, they started off on the way. Socrates fell behind, absorbed in his own thoughts. And when my friend was waiting, someone told him, go on ahead. See, this is where the dialogue begins, and therefore what came before it we can skip. Hmm. Would you do that again, please? <coughs> good. That's a good one. argues, by the way, that there's a uh, third part of this that looks like a continuation. It could either be another introduction, but a curious. And that goes from 72 to 74. And therefore, my friend said, with good reason, so far as he convinced me, to pick up the dialogue on 74 where it says, Socrates sat down. And the symposium, as you know, they're all sitting around in a circle.
It's a symposium. And they have a great idea to have a talk about the nature of love, and each person in the circle has to give a speech on the nature of love, moving from left to right. So let's get on to that and forget about this question, because my friend was so convincing. Unless you could have some way of saving it. <laughs> I've, I have your suggestion well in mind, which was let's just read it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. that's not so good. Yeah. <laughs> Easy way out. Well, there are a lot, can I say, there are a lot of characteristics in the description of Apollodorus, Aristodemus, and, and Socrates that also show up in, say, Diotima's speech of oh. poverty and plenty and love and some of those characters. Mm -hmm. So um, it seems to me that it would be very interesting to see if those characteristics indicate analogical relationships to the dramatis personae of the, <laughs> to the yeah, players yeah, in yeah, the drama. Yeah, sure. What is the relation between those people in the intro And the way they describe. <laughs> well, how should we proceed? Well, also, why is it presented as a recollection or a series of recollections? Yeah. That's a good point. Come on, good point. Especially Why since take the form of recollections. Especially since Socrates takes Agathon through the dialogue, he says, or at least a similar dialogue, similar to uh, the one that Diotima took him through when he was uh, learning the art of love from her. And so that's a recollection. And so that's it a seems recollection. like that plays a role. Oh, that answered your question. Partially. Deep into it. All right. All right. All right. All right. So therefore, look here. Shall we go the usual way and ask whether this is the good way to go and just ask Brad? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. His traditional role. That's a good one. Got a which way? Which way exactly are you um, saying we should proceed? The myth. The suggestion is being made, and that is, if you want to see what meaning there may lie in this one, two, three, or two and a half, you might relate it to the themes in the myth of Eros that Socrates spends in his speech. Sure. Right. Yeah. Any objections? Should we work with that, uh, that uh, as a takeoff point? Oh, we're going to read the myth of Eros? Yeah. Okay. What about the beginning? That's oh, great. What about the what? What about the beginning? We don't have to start at the beginning. How can we compare two things unless we start with one of them? Well, they put all these words in the book. I mean, I'm sure that's, that's why in my book they were torn out. See, it's unnecessary. <laughs> well, I have a... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You're following the argument? Yeah. The argument is the way to understand what's going on in the introduction is to reread the myth of Eros, or love, in Socrates' speech, and that should help us see these themes appear in the beginning. And if they do, good heavens, we may have to go the next step and say, then why is he doing that? That's meaning. Meaning. Mm. Right? That's, that's where we get to the level of meaning. Right. Well, Dude, we started the Phaedrus at the end. It was even worse. Well, if we, were, if we were good readers, we'd just read the, read the last paragraph, but that takes more skill. <laughs> okay, look here. Mm -hmm. If so, all right, 98. Oh, uh, It's just a slight problem in this, but let's find a... a want to jump in? Sure. Yeah, okay. 
So are we reading who was his mother, who's his father, or are we starting with... Um, well, what could love be? Oh, no, the myth of arrows, you're right, you're right. That's right. Oh, it's just a, it's a matter of a it's name. The definition of it. So do you think starting with what could love be, or starting with um, what, who was his father and who was his mother? Who offered the suggestion, you or I? You offered starting with 98. Starting and with your idea. Has three paragraphs. Yes, yes, yes. Did you make reference to the And of if you want to deal with the story of the myth of Eros, you're suggesting maybe we better look at Eros before we look at the father yes. and the mother of okay. Eros. Okay. Ah. Right. So we could go with. Jump in when you're ready. Then who could love be a mortal? Not at all. What then, I ask, just as before, between mortal and immortal? What is he then, Diatima? How about someone pick up Socrates? Make it a little clearer. So why not someone start with what, is what could love be? Then what could love be? A mortal? You, that's you too. A mortal? Not at all. What then? Just as before, between mortal and immortal. What is he then, Diatima? A great spirit, Socrates, for all the spiritual is between divine and mortal. What power has he? To interpret and to ferry across to the gods things given by men, and to men things from the gods. From men petitions and sacrifices, from the gods commands and requitals in return. And being in the middle, it completes them and binds all together into a whole. Through this intermediary moves all the art of divination and the art of priests and all concerned with sacrifice and mysteries and incantations and all sorcery and witchcraft. For God mingles not with man, but through this comes all the communion and conversation of gods with men and men with gods, both awake and asleep. We like that part. I do. I do. <laughs> Keep going. All right. And who, he who is expert in this is a spiritual man. But the expert in something other than this, such as common arts or crafts, is a vulgar man. These spirits are many, and of all sorts and kinds, and one of them is love. Okay, now, what do you do with that? Well, every paragraph in Socrates has a structure. So, structure of man. So what's the structure that you find in this paragraph? Right. It's a mean analogy. Hey, it's a mean analogy between extremes. If so, the extremes are a duad, right? dual. And love, therefore, is between, as a mean term. Now, can you go back and do it? What goes... Petitions and sacrifices. Two things going up, two things coming down. Right? The whole thing is structured as a dynamic dyad. So, what about it? We do it again, okay? Could you read the same paragraph? Sure. Oh, uh, sorry. <clears throat> then what could love be? A mortal. A mortal? Oh, sorry. Not at all. What then? Just as before, between mortal and immortal. What is he then, Diatima? A great spirit, Socrates. For all the spiritual is between divine and mortal. Well, what power has it? To interpret and to ferry across to the gods things given by men. Two. And to right. men, right. things from the gods. Men, men, we offer up sacrifices and petitions yeah. to the gods. From the gods, commands, and requitals. Two and two, right? Yeah. Keep going. And being in the middle, it completes them and binds all together into a whole. And that's what a mean analogy does. Binds them together and completes them. 
Therefore, without mortal, the divine would be incomplete. It needs the mortal towards a mean analogy. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, through, through this intermediary moves all the art of divination and the art of priests and all concerned with sacrifice One, and mysteries. Two, three, and right. incantations and all sorcery and witchcraft. The last two are misstated, right? What are they in the Greek? Any other translation? Uh, they're soothsaying, monteon and goateon. Pardon me. Mon the goateon is... The Spells and charms. Mm. Epodos, that would be... Right, so, because that, it's not witchcraft. That's no, it's not witchcraft. Okay, it's no. Goateon could be no. like no. sorcery. No. Even sorcery has a uh, Middle Ages association. But in any case, look here. Each one of these you should know. That means store it in your head. Absolutely essential for the whole dialogue. Okay, good? Okay. Um, yes, please. Uh, Montique, let's see. Um, Monte, Monte. Oh, okay. I just wanted to note from the Greek, uh, he start, the first word he uses in these arts is Montique. And the second he, word he uses is actually a construction, the art of the priest, and that everything that's under the art of the priest is all subsumed in that art. Of everything he mentions after, yeah. in terms of how it reads in the Greek. Yeah. So it's not like there's the, a whole collection of arts. It's it's like prophecy, then the art of the priest, and all the other arts are subsumed under the art of the priest. Yeah. Or you could say... The art of divination presupposes a priest or a priestess. That too, yeah. Right. And therefore, these things fit within the category of what that person is able to do. The priest, yes. yes. So what follows from this? You want Thomas Taylor? Yes, please. Oh, no, no. What I was going to... The, the issue of when we're talking about witchcraft and that particular translation... That's associated, you know, with the paganism idea of Christianity. And what you were trying to point out, if I'm not mistaken, is that these are sacred arts. Yes. Because it's a priest who is doing it, not some, you know, street vendor, you know, entertaining people. When they were going to these uh, festivals, you know, these were serious um, people of high mind. Oh. Yeah who went for yeah. dreams and, and connections with the gods and the, the mysteries and that kind of stuff. And that that's kind of what you're indicating here, is that mm -hmm. this is a spiritual path. These are steps in development mm -hmm. of the person's spiritual life. Mm -hmm. And what follows from that? Yes. Yes. Well, that's where we're going. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can you pick it up from there, please? Sure. For God mingles not with man, but through this comes all the communion and conversation of gods with men Two. and men with gods. Back and forth. Right. Still duatic. Go ahead. <clears throat> Both awake and asleep. and asleep. And he who is expert in this is its spiritual man. But the expert in something other than this, such as common arts or crafts, is a vulgar man. These spirits are many and of all sorts and kinds, and one of them is love. I, yeah, there's just one word I don't get. Um, this. He who is an expert in this is a spiritual man. Because we're arguing about what a priest knows. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if that's the sentence or if the whole paragraph is what he's said. That's what makes a spiritual man. Well, as usual, uh, it's a damn good question, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Because it would include being All able to cool communicate back and forth with the gods and the gods with men, yeah. and to be aware of what's going on in the waking world and asleep, and therefore a dream world. Yeah. You don't have to be a priest to be aware of this. You, could, you, you really have to know a lot more than being a priest. Yeah. You have to know yeah. what a priest does. Yeah. No, no, no and, this and, is, and how a priest functions in yeah. that whole process. Yeah. Uh, I reject yeah. that. This is a priest. The wise man about these other is spiritual. He's spiritual. 
right. Okay, look, look here. Look here. We Shut, know that the, the lobe says dia tuto in both cases, right? Mm -hmm. um, David, so when you, you see where it says through this intermediary, that's like dia tuto, and then down below, it's also, it's the same, the same thing. So there's at least one possibility that it goes back to love through this intermediary, and then that includes all those sub, sub, subcategories. Mm -hmm. oh. Right? And then through this, again, would include all of these. What goes well, that that help, that help. My concern was that, oh, the other that we're being um, free. Should, should we go off on yeah, a tangent for three, 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 three sentences? Yeah. No. I mean, since we have nothing else to do. We disagree on that. Which this are you referring to? He is an expert in this. He was an expert in this. That's the spiritual name. Okay, look here. Understands his intercourse between he and his, he and his God. I just want you to master three sentences. The opening three sentences of Socrates on page 97 or 202a. Right. And now you shall have peace from me. Got it? No. Yeah, the, the right. prior page. Right. There's a speech page. about love, which I heard once from Diotima mm. of Mantinea. And now you shall have peace from me, but there is a speech about love, which I heard once from Diotima of Mantinea. Uh, I was wise in this matter and in many others. By making the Athenians perform sacrifices before the plague, she even managed to put off the disease for ten years. And she it was who taught me about love affairs. Hey, um, is she a priestess? Yeah. yeah. Um, is one of the things in the art of divination sacrifices? Mm -hmm. But was she good at that? Mm -hmm. yeah. And prophetic? Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, is it possible if we read through the dialogue, we can check every one of the other factors just as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be curious. Well, <laughs> say, I'd like you to do something for me. Um, since some of you have a piece of paper, why don't you write out the answer to this question, okay? Um, okay. Uh, want to start, please? Now, it's fair to call on colleagues. You want it? Okay. Oh, it's being very gracious. Let him go first. Okay. In the universe, you know, what, what would you say is the cause of love? In the universe? Of course. What's the cause of love? Not just in Brooklyn. The source, <laughs> the source of love. What? The source of love? Um, that was the question. Yes. That was the question. Yes. Well, it isn't girlfriends, I know that. <laughs> 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 <That's so funny. laughs> <Thank you. laughs> okay, look here. Let, let, me, let, me ask, let me ask it another way, all right? What factors must come together to bring about the existence of love? Or what are the preconditions for the nature of love to come into existence? Got the question? That's what he's answering in myth. Who is his father and who is his mother? So, who is his father? This is love. Mm -hmm. Who is his father and who is his mother? He's answering that question by taking these as personifications. Therefore, everything he says about the father, everything he says about the mother, are the preconditions for the existence of love. So, all right, that's where we're going. Mm. Would you not agree we need a reader? Mm. We do. Especially one who's just had some good water. Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> who's his father and who's his mother? That is rather a long story. But still, I will tell you. When Aphrodite was born, 
the gods held a feast. Among them, Plenty, the son of never at a loss. When they had dined, poverty came in begging, as might be expected with all that good cheer, and hung about the doors. Plenty then got drunk on the nectar, for there was no wine yet, and went into Zeus's park all heavy and fell asleep. So poverty, because of her penury, made a plan to have a child from plenty, and lay by his side and conceived love. This is why love has become follower and servant of Aphrodite, having been begotten at her birthday party. And at the same time, he is by nature a lover busy with beauty, because Aphrodite is beautiful. Hmm. Then, since love is the son of plenty and poverty, he gets his fortunes from this. First, he is always poor, and far from being tender and beautiful, as most people think. He is hard and rough and unshod and homeless, lying always on the ground without bedding, sleeping by the doors and in the streets, in the open air, having his mother's nature always dwelling with want. But from his father, again, he has designs upon beautiful and good things, being brave and go-ahead and high-strung, a mighty hunter, always weaving devices. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and a successful coveter of wisdom, a philosopher all his all days, stage. a great wizard and sorcerer and sophist. Same language. Yes. See? Go ahead. He was born neither mortal nor immortal. But on the same day, sometimes he's blooming and alive when he has plenty. Sometimes he's dying. Then again, he gets new life through his father's nature. But what he procures in plenty always trickles away. So that love is not in want nor in wealth. And again, he is between wisdom and ignorance. The truth is this. No God seeks after wisdom or desires to become wise, for wise he is already. Nor does anyone seek after wisdom if he is wise already. And again, the ignorant do not seek after wisdom, nor desire to become wise, for this is the worst of ignorance. And one who is neither beautiful and good nor in that one who is neither beautiful and good nor intelligent should think himself good enough. So he does not desire it, because he does not think he is lacking in what he does not think he needs. Now, uh, in this game, you have to dump what you think is ignorance and wisdom and mm -hmm. only pick up his definition. Mm -hmm. Right? So you should be able to tell me how many of your dearest friends are ignorant. All of them. All of them. Don't go to one of his parties. <laughs> <laughs> At some time or another, huh? No, no, you got it? Come on, go back over, quick. Come on. Get the points. Wisdom. Got it. Can you tell me everything about poverty? Can you tell me everything about plenty? That means you should be able to say,
Okay, if you know the myth, what does it mean to know the myth? It means that you should be able to describe without failure each of the items being noted, the figures or the persons in the myth. Right? Because the persons in the myth personify certain things. Right? Father, mother, got them? Right? Love, got them? Then, what do they do, or how do they function, the story? What's the purpose of the story? What is it trying to explain? And then, how can you apply it? Well, this is everything, all, all the, this is the basic way you look at any Platonic myth, or myth in general, a Greek myth. Okay, now you should be able to get a picture of what are the preconditions for love? What does it mean for poverty to be in the doorway? How is she described? How is, what is the difference between the description of poverty and plenty? Are they both gods? Make sure. Take a look. Uh, what's curious about this? Are they celebrating a birthday? No. They're celebrating a twin birthday. Are they not? What's the twin <coughs> birthday? Kate? Aphrodite and the love. Yeah, read it. Could you read it out loud for us? Where am I reading? Starting with the, the, I, the, I, who are the philosophers? No, who's, who was his father? Who was his father? We're talking about the guy. And who was his mother? Hmm. I say. She answered, Go ahead, please. This is rather a long story, but still I will tell you. When Aphrodite was born, Thank you. The gods held oh, Thank her. you. What is it? A birth. A birth. Uh -huh. A birth. A birth. Ah. ah. Whose birth? Aphrodite. Beauty. Ah. Oh. Oh. Is there another birth in that myth? Mm -hmm. uh, the son of Mary, never at a loss. Is there another oh, birth in that story? Yes. Whose? They conceived love. love. Oh, oh, eros, love. Oh, therefore, how many birthdays? Two. Thank you. Right. right. Love and. Right. Uh, what's the significance of that? That a precondition for love is beauty. Uh, what kind? Well, that's divine beauty. Divine, divine beauty. beauty. Aphrodite, divine beauty. Mm -hmm. oh. This also speaks to that competition with Hesiod, because this is a Theogony he's got here. And Hesiod wrote a Theogony, where he has the birth of Aphrodite and the Eros as well. Uh -huh. that, that plays a role later in the speech. Don't well, I hope you'll tell us what role. That you're going to compete with the divine poets if you're doing philosophy. Uh, he would look to Homer and Hesiod. And, uh, and therefore? Well, I was just... This would be part of the competition, what we're seeing here. Okay. And the whole work needs to be thought of in that way, right? Or we need to see how that's the case. Which would require us to get into Hesiod, too. So. Okay. 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 But I, I don't know. Maybe you're looking for me to... No, I, I'm always looking for more meaning than you give. Oh, come on. That's a failing of that mine. That's a dig. <laughs> that's a failing of yours. Nice. Hey, look here. Look here. All right. What is that, man? What does what mean? What is the fact that there are these two births? Hmm. The myth is concerned with two births. Hmm. Oh, by the way, uh, he passes out drinking uh, nectar. He's a god. Drink of the gods and deathlessness. Deathlessness. <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. like now, Every single word in this myth is going to be linked together in the dialogue in more than one place, right? But especially these, these issues. What special issue so far? Nectar. Two. So, wouldn't you agree love is real? <coughs> Pardon me. 
poverty among all women and pictures of women, she's really great. Would you not agree with that, sir? Great. No. I've admired her for years. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What I tell you? What? She's a beggar. Unchod. Homeless. Holy smell. Not beautiful. <laughs> That's not why I think she's great, though I like those things too. Oh, because she because she what makes a plan to have a child. I like that. Nah, I know many a woman have have done that. That does make them unusual. Okay. <laughs> I see you guys just don't have the experience. Oh, okay, okay. Then I won't tell you. Interesting. No, I think you should tell us because we don't have the experience. Hmm. It's probably hmm. better off than Catherine's house. Well, okay. Is it likely that you might be able to pick out a couple of women here who have some degree of experience with men? Mm, yeah. Oh, good, good. So if you're stuck, you can call on many of them? Okay. Okay, okay. Have you ever known a woman who could... Uh, Get knocked up while uh, the man is uh, passed out with booze? Uh, no. <laughs> she is very good. Right? Agree? Wait a Agree? Yeah. Yeah, see? He's admiring her already. What's the significance of that, see? What's the significance about the fact that he has to pass out before this takes place? If you don't answer that, you don't understand the symposium. Hmm. Everything in this myth is going to be opened up, but you have to then see the mystery behind every single slicker. Why the doorway? Why does she have his eyes on him? Why does she wait for him to pass out? Hey, no nine months, bang, out it comes, love, ready to go. What are the two things that love does? Dual. What other? Follower and attendant on Aphrodite. Follower and attendant after Aphrodite. Ah. Ah. Following servant. Attendant. Following servant. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, let's just say we have enough of this. And, uh, Good. Take your first, your, your suggestion. I'm not a to go back to the beginning now. Yeah. See how the descriptions of the philosophers there compare. Yeah. Yeah. Or characters there. But, uh,. Uh, hmm. What does that mean about Diotima? That's Socrates' teacher of Diotima, mm -hmm. right? What mm -hmm. does that mean about Diotima? Brilliant. Smart. Sorceress. Hey, she's a good, she's, a, she's an interesting broad. I like this. Yeah. yeah. Let she's me tell you, man. Sure <clears throat> she knew all about love affairs. Has, Wait, has she been active? Even good yeah. ones like that. Yeah. She's, um, she's yeah. not a philosopher. Yeah, yeah. Uh, admirable. <laughs> and she taught him all about love affairs. Hmm. And now she's going to detail everything that she learned. So if she, therefore, is the priestess or the mean term in that analogy, right? between, and these, this becomes the gods and this becomes men, become men and gods, she's the intermediary. And she's going to then carry that tradition on through Socrates. Well, then we should be able to have in some way a communion and conversation between men and gods and gods and men through a diatema speech, if this mm. has anything to do with anything. Mm. So that both worlds is a signification of the door. Yeah, that's right. All right. That's right. Yeah. See, this is what you got to play. Every part you got to mm -hmm. reflect on. See, every part you got to reflect on. Take it apart. Try this. If you can find one word that doesn't link itself up with a whole bunch of other meaningful words, then it's an ornamentation and you can reject it as mere rhetoric. Yes. But if everything fits, then you have to find its connection. And that's what we're doing. So why don't we just uh, put this aside and use your suggestion. Why don't we read no more than a couple of paragraphs, the first couple of paragraphs in the dialogue. Up here. If she's between wisdom and ignorance, you don't have to answer this right now. Um, why is she described as wise? 
Why is she described as wise? Yeah, because love is supposed to be not wise. Of course. Right. She's not a philosopher. Yeah. She's wise. But that seems inconsistent. So. No, it's not. <laughs> not if she knows all about love. Right. No, you have to spell out the inconsistency. Well, right, like, he describes a philosopher or love as sometimes in poverty and sometimes in plenty. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like she can be in poverty ever if she's wise. Yeah, okay. Or, or the symbol of love, for that matter. That's it. She holds on to that. You say, you know what, I think this is a good work, but fundamentally it stinks because there's this fundamental weakness that Socrates and Plato weren't able to deal with. Hold on. Or it's a strength. Yeah, yeah, oh, like a bulldog. That's reading. That's reading. Yeah. Shall we do it now? Intro? Tell me what you see. First couple of paragraphs. Let's get a new set of readers. Okay. It might be interesting to note that Apollodorus means gift of Apollo. A gift of Apollo. And Aristodemus means basically, I think, best of men. Best of men. So Aristodemus. Yeah. Best of the people. Yeah. Um, uh, can you do the same thing with Glaucon? Glaucon is, means, I think, gray, eyed like Athena. Like Athena. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Athena. Yeah. 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 Like the owl. Yeah, yeah like the owl. Gray eyed. Owl okay. Eyes. So, all right. Uh, I think I'm pretty well word perfect in what you're inquiring about. It so happened a day or two ago that I was coming up to town from Baileron when someone I knew caught sight of me and called out from behind, some distance away, in a bantering tone. Hello, Hello. you... Oh, you're going to read it all? Oh, just, that's okay. No, go ahead. Hello, you Valerian there, he shouted. Apollodorus, halt! I halted and stood still. And he said, well, Apollodorus, I was just looking for you. I wanted to know about Agathon's party. Socrates and Alcibiades and the others who were at the dinner then and the speeches they made about love. Somebody else told me the story. He heard it from Phoenix, Philip's son, and he said you knew too. But he had nothing very clear to say, so you must tell it to me. You are the best man to report your friend's speeches. But tell me first of all, were you at the party yourself or not? It is obvious that the story he told was not clear, if you think this party you asked about was held lately, so that I might have been there myself. That is what I thought. How could you think that, my dear Glaucon? Don't you know that Agathon has been abroad for many years, and it's only in the last three years I've been spending my time with Socrates, and taking care every day to know whatever he says or does? Before that, I used to run all over the place, anywhere, and I thought myself a grand fellow, but I was more miserable than anyone, just as you are now, when you think you would do anything rather than be a philosopher. Oh, don't jeer. Just tell me when that party was. It was when we were boys, and Agathon won the prize with his first tragedy. On the next day after, he and his chorus offered the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And that is a long time ago, as it seems. But who told you the story? Was it Socrates? Oh, dear me, no. The same man who told Phoenix. He was a Kaidathenaean, Aristodemus, a little man who never wore shoes. He was at the party, a lover of Socrates as much as anyone else in those days, I think. I did ask Socrates himself about some things, too, which I heard from this man, and he agreed with all the other had told me. Well, I think you might tell me now. Certainly, the road to town will do well enough for us to talk and listen as we go. So as we went along, we talked about all this, and hence, as I told you to begin with, I am pretty well word perfect. Well, if I must tell you people the story, too, then I must. The truth is that whenever I speak about philosophy myself or hear others doing so, I am highly delighted, besides believing that it does me good. But when I hear other kinds of talk, especially among you rich men and money makers, it annoys me, and I pity you, my friends, because you are doing nothing while you think you are doing something. Well, perhaps again you believe I am a poor devil, and I think you think right, 
but I don't think you are. I know it well. Good. That's it. So what do we know? What can we draw from that introduction? Through some, he's gone through a transformation. This, this guy. He's gone through a transformation. Yep. Oh. From what to what? From being um, miserable, ignorant, to uh, to a philosopher. Or he he says he he knows the condition of right. Uh, of the gentleman he's speaking with, or, or these people that aren't engaged in philosophical talks. To what, is the, to what would you attribute the transformation or the change, according to the talk? Spending his time with Socrates and taking care every day yeah. to know what he does, says or does. So mm -hmm. he's a follower, of so to speak. Follower? Yeah, which is the language of the, the language of, of uh, the myth, of the, the myth. role of uh, oh. Eros. Oh. 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 <laughs> Say, I missed something. I wonder whether you can fill it in for me. Be forward. Uh, did here. <clears throat> I think I, I think I'm pretty well word perfect in what you're inquiring about. It so happened a day or two ago that I was coming up to town from Falerion when someone I knew caught sight of me and called out, "Who's he talking to?" Welcome, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, no, he's talking to me. And we don't discover that until we go until further. Until we go further. Right. Okay. All right. Now, um, what does that tell us? Well, would you agree there's <clears throat> a lot of references going back and forth about time? So what does that mean? Time references. Mm -hmm. What's going on in the time references? Hmm. Well, isn't it isn't a, a point being made about the fact that? Well, I don't. Well, one of the things happening with time is that the Glaucon thinks the dialogue might just have taken place, mm -hmm. such that Apollodorus could have been at it. Mm -hmm. But in fact, that that isn't that that isn't true. And because he gets a really bad account of it from someone who heard the same, apparently heard it related as well, Phoenix. And he wasn't satisfied with a partial talk. And Something in the talk must have spurred him on to get the whole. To get the whole talk, yes. Ah, so what did he then do? What? Look here. Here, as you, here's, here. There's a great banquet, mm -hmm. symposium. Now there's a recollection of it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, is there a... Mm-hmm. A chain being established? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A transmission? Mm -hmm. Is there a transmission going on? Mm -hmm. Oh. How accurate is the transmission? Are there many oh. references in it in respect to making sure that whatever is being recollected is sound? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the standard for truth in this? His reference to talking to Socrates about it. Therefore? Because therefore, it has to be correct. Socrates is the great man of memory, right? He's mm -hmm. got the great recollection powers of recollection. So he becomes the test. He becomes the carrier. Mm -hmm. So they, they refer to him to make sure the account is accurate. Mm -hmm. So we're getting an accurate representation through several people. Mm -hmm. So there's a train of transmission going on. Mm -hmm. wonder why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, 
Why is Apollodorus doing it? Well, because of the... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just thinking about the, because of the songs of Marcius. That, well, you, you were, it just hit in my mind when you said, why is, why is word perfect important? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, um, there's another section in the speech of Alcibiades, and he compares Socrates to um, a Silenus, and then to Marcius, who was a pipe player who played mm -hmm. the song, the divine songs, mm -hmm. and bewitched people. And the, these songs could be played by anyone, even a pipe, piping girl, and they would bewitch. And the same point is made about Socrates' uh, words, that anybody who repeats those words will, will have an, an mm -hmm. ravishing effect upon anyone hearing them. Is so, it having an effect on Apollodorus? Yes. Give well, me a proof. <laughs> well, we talked about the, I'm assuming the, well, it's an assumption based on the change that he went through. No. All right. Oh. Well, he's word perfect. Come on, help out. Oh, he says, here, um, whenever I speak about philosophy, I'm highly delighted, be delighted <laughs> besides believing it does me good. Yes, it, what? He does says, me does good. Does me good. Yeah, thank you. Does me good. Did you say in radishing? In radishing. Oh, okay. I thought you said in radishing. Because it would make so much sense, wouldn't it? Well, <laughs> there's a lot of, hey, there's a lot of enravishing going on mm -hmm. in the myth and elsewhere. I support enravishing. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. All right. And, and um, Pierre, the text, the text talks about the fact that he admits that when he was traveling around before thinking he was a grand fellow, he was just mm -hmm. miserable. Mm -hmm. He states it. I, mm -hmm. mis I was miserable. I was unhappy. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, not just There's visual. a picture of the well, change, isn't anyone. it? Right. There's a picture of the... Can you tell me one more thing? Uh, what would you say is the kind of relationship that these people in the transmission had with Socrates or what's being said and repeated? Well, you could call them lover of Socrates. Yeah. Aristodemus. Especially Aristodemus. Aristodemus is a lover of Socrates as much as anyone else in those days, which I'm assuming... Apollodorus is now including himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those yeah. Days now. Are they come on, Are they functioning like lovers? Here, oh, like love. Look like here. Let us suppose for the moment that the book has a sense of direction and some intelligibility. All right, just, just, <laughs> Let's give it to him. Okay. Give it. Right, okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Want you to do something for him? Okay. Write down all the characters mentioned in the dialogue. Okay? Every person that has a proper name, you know, I want its name there. Okay? Now, uh, here I want... Um, might be able to do. <clears throat> we might be able to establish who best fulfills the mm -hmm. analogical relationships mm -hmm. of the myth in the dialogue, who mm -hmm. plays those roles. So we might be able to... Uh...
agree? By the way, suppose you decided to, uh, you know, do it diligently. Wouldn't it be interesting if it turned out that there is more than one set possible? Which would clearly show the guy has talent in writing, but he lost it. Nah, if there were more than one set, that would mean he's bad. Yeah, that's right. That's what I said. He lost his talent? He lost his talent. Where's the evidence he had talent? There wasn't. That's, oh. We're stretching Jeez. it. Okay. We're giving him <laughs> such credit. Or there's a way out. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But you first have to have the problem before you can play looking for a solution. Hmm. Agree? Gotcha. So, by the way, uh, Apollodorus, Glaucon, Aristominos, Phoenix, right? We, we can put it in, can't we? Mm -hmm. and, and their talks will give clues to the relationship between plenty, poverty, love. And That's right. right. And, and this model, this model should be able to show us in the transmission if someone is, in fact, functioning like Eros in the myth, a follower and attendant of Aphrodite. Aphrodite. Right. Good. 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 Here, in some way, mm -hmm. could we say that this is a an elaboration upon the divided line? Mm. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, but that means you have to. Uh, <clears throat> uh, well, because it's you know it's four yeah. parts. Go ahead. It's four parts. No. Yeah. And it has you know the relationship you know of those levels you know beginning with opinion and ending oh. with understanding. That's yes. You're raising an important question. Let me rephrase it after I hear it from Barbara. No, no, I wasn't going to say anything. Someone was over here. It was Ingmar. Oh, Ingmar, dude. Well, I wasn't even listening. Well, I really have nothing to say about that. I was um, interested to see how you're going to deal with it. Okay. Oh, I guess I actually had a question about you saying, you put Socrates in the role of love, and I can see why, but isn't that giving us too much of a hint? Don't worry, it's wrong. Okay, it's going to be... <laughs> <coughs> Would you agree, in the myth, the last paragraph we read, he deals with two ideas, and I cautioned you about being sure that you focused on it and will remember it. Hmm. Yeah, the definition of ignorance and wisdom. Now, in the first paragraph, and we only read the first three sentences, He's going to make a big point about this, a mean between these two, but it takes a curious term, and that is uh, these are the four. Now, a different kind of ignorance than, you see, these two are similar, of course, in the divided line, but these two are not in the divided line, because that's belief and image thinking. But in any case, could you, after you do this table, raise the question of, given the way in which they are described, not your understanding of any of these terms, can you uh, know which of these people? Personify? So therefore you should be able to go back into this table 
I make the judgment. The information is there. Now, of course, we haven't touched, of course, on the fact that there's a bunch of different speeches and how are we going to look at them. But that's because we're running out of time and uh, we don't want to work overtime. I do. Right, Barbara? <laughs> right. <laughs> is that because you can only have fun after work? And that's measurable, isn't it? Yeah. We should touch on it. Yeah. Yeah. Even though we haven't really taken apart the first yeah. one. Yeah. 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 Well, we need a reader over here if we'd like to play. Jackie. I have the same Did I hear a voice? Here, you can use mine. Oh, you'll play? Thank you. I will. I just, I have the Shelley translation. Uh, whichever one, but you pick Shelley. the one. Yeah, I'll okay, pass so. it. Right, read right up here. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Starting with friend? Yeah. Yeah, friend. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, need a dialogue? Thank you. Okay. It is not worthwhile quarreling about this now, Apollodorus. But please do what I beg you. Don't say no, but tell me what the speeches oh. were. I like the other friend above it. Can we have a read that? Yes. Too? Could you read the friend above that? Always the same, Apollodorus. Always abusing yourself and everybody else. You really seem to think everyone is wretched except Socrates, beginning with yourself. <laughs> Where you got the nickname of Madman, I do not know exactly. But in what way, you, or in what you say, you are always mad enough. You rave against yourself and everybody except Socrates. Same page, right? 71 in the rouse. <coughs> it's right. Oh, my dear man, surely it is plain that I am mad and crazy. If I have such a notion about myself, then you all? It is not worthwhile quarreling about this now, Apollodorus. <laughs> but please do what I beg you. Don't say no, but tell me what the speeches were. Well, they were something like this. But I will try to tell you the story from the beginning, as Aristodemus told it. Okay, that's a little interlude, right, for the introduction. So go ahead. Oh, that's true. Aristodemus said that he met Socrates coming from the bath with evening shoes on, which he did not often wear. And he asked him where he was going so smart. He said, to dinner at Agathon's. Yesterday he had refused him at the victory feast to avoid the crowd, but he accepted for today. That's why I made myself pretty, he said, to go pretty to a pretty man. But look here, how about you yourself feeling willing to go to a dinner uninvited? And I replied, as it was famous, as you like. You want us to take us off? Come with me then, and we will pervert the proverb a bit and say, when gents give dinners, gents may just walk in. For when, Homer, the, when the good banquet, the good are always invited. Go mm -hmm. ahead. For Homer has really perverted this proverb and made it vulgar too. He draws Agamemnon as a very perfect gentle knight, and Menelaus as a weak warrior. And when Agamemnon gave a feast and a sacrifice, he brings in Menelaus to the feast uninvited. Although he is a low man, and the other high. Well, hearing this, my friend said, well, perhaps I'll risk it too. Not as you suggest, Socrates, but as in Homer. I, a poor creature, will go uninvited to a wise man's feast. Ooh. Then just think what you will say about it, for I certainly will not admit that I came uninvited. I'll, t I'll tell him that you invited me. 
Two heads are better than one, and we will plan what we shall say. Well, let us go. So after some such talk, they started off. On the way, Socrates fell behind, absorbed in his own thoughts. And when my friend was waiting, Socrates told him to go on ahead. When he came to Agathon's house, he found the door open. And there, he said, something rather ridiculous happened. For a servant from inside met him at once and led him where the others were on their couches. And he came upon them as they were about to begin dinner. But as soon as Agathon saw him, he said, My dear Aristodemus, you are just in time to join us at dinner. If you've come for something else, put it off to another time. Yesterday I looked for you to invite you, but I could not see you anywhere. But you, why, you have not brought us Socrates. I turned around, continued Aristodemus, but I could not see Socrates following. So I said I had come with Socrates, and he had invited me there to dinner. Very, very nice. very nice of you to come. But where is the man? He was coming in behind me just now. I wonder myself where he could be. You there, you boy. Look about and bring in Socrates. And you take your place here, Aristodemus, besides Eryximachus. Well, then the boy washed his feet that he might take his place. And another boy came and reported. Socrates went into the porch next door, and there he is standing. But though I called him, he will not come in. That's odd. Just ask him again, and don't let him go. But my friend said, Don't do that. Leave him alone. That is only his way. He often goes off and stands anywhere. He will come soon, I think. Don't interfere with him. Let him alone. <laughs> well, very well. If you think so, we must do so. Serve the feast for the rest of us, you boys, and put before us just what you choose, whenever no one directs you. I never tried this before. Oh. Now then, <laughs> imagine that I also, as well as the others here, have been invited by you to dinner, and serve us so as to earn our compliments. Thereupon. After this. after this, after this, he said, they fell too, but no Socrates appeared. Agathon kept on giving orders to send for him, but my friend would not let him. However, he did come, after not so long a delay as usual, and found them about the middle of dinner. Then Agathon, who was reclining on the lowest seat alone, on the right, said, This way, Socrates, come by me. I want to get a hold of you and enjoy that wise thought which came to you on the porch. For it is clear you found it and have it still, or you would never have come away. Okay. Let's hold it there. Uh, notice we could skip this. <laughs> no? no? What do you see it doing? Same question. So, mm -hmm. Same question. Yeah. Well, thank you. Earlier... It was clear that Arist um, Aristodemus's recollection is just as good as Socrates because everything Aristodemus says that Socrates hears checked with him by Apollodorus is confirmed, hmm. and he's this great lover of Socrates, great as just as great as anyone else. But in this scene that we just read, there's only one person standing out on the porch, and that's Socrates. It's no. That doesn't mean anything. What I'm trying to say is there's an absence of... Right, let me make sure. That doesn't mean anything, does it? Oh, I, yes, I think it does mean something. Ignore we'll what she said. Figure, we'll have to figure it out, though. What? What, what? We'll have to figure that out. Oh, go ahead. And they're enjoying being fed. Everybody no, else No, 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 no. Stay on the issue. Drinking. What's the issue? Come on. The issue that was just brought up. What was the issue? Okay, look, it, it, it is extremely foolish. It's extremely foolish. That whole section doesn't even have to be in the dialogue. I mean, what difference does it make with the guy happens to stay by a doorway? It's the oh, I mean a porch. A porch, yeah. It's the transition time. 
It's the door parallels. and the myth. It's, what? It's drawing some parallels to the myth. Right. Oh, what, what? Standing in the doorway. Oh. But he's not shoeless. Now we are gaining, we may be gaining something about the myth by seeing how Socrates is functioning. Mm -hmm. yeah, and later on, Alcibiades is uh, going to have, have something uh, to say about that. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Make that connection? Mm -hmm. And he says he often does it too, which would suggest that at least he has part of the cycle of the poverty planning cycle. Right? Yeah. Who understands it and who doesn't? Oh, Aristodemus understands it and Agathon doesn't. Okay. Oh, what do you think of Agathon so far? He doesn't know Socrates. So, and um, he's an ignorant. He doesn't know he's ignorant. Mm. Right, he doesn't have any So, how many banquets are mentioned in the dialogue? Mm. Two? No. Oh, you mean, well, there's the one of the myth, and then there's the one of him yesterday. We need a whole, don't we need a table of banquets? Mm -hmm. right. banquet table. How many do you have so far? Three. Ah, got to get more than three. Oh, really? <laughs> okay, three. Get as many as you can. Yeah. Does each of the recollections qualify? Well, okay. All right. That's no, good no, enough. We have a, we have, it's cheating. Okay. But you are seeing a possible connection using our table. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You're filling it in. What else can you say about it? Come on, more. Got Agathon? Why does he... Uh, see, the part that you can really reject is really irrelevant. I'll, I'll tell you what to... I'm just take it out. Um, This opening paragraph about um, Aristodemos said that he met Socrates coming from the bath with evening shoes on, which he did not often wear. And he asked him where, where, where he was going so smart. He said, to, to dinner at Agathon's. Yesterday he had refused him at the victory feast to avoid the crowd. So See, he didn't need to two, say right? that. What? So there's two there. Yes. Right? yes. And there's, there's two there. Right. Yeah. So, we, yeah. Uh, there's so, the God, the one in the mid. You know, see, true. he didn't have to say that. Who cares whether mm. Agathon had a party and won a prize for writing a tragedy? tragedy. You know, it really is irrelevant. It's one of those ornamental things that have no meaning. Mm. Well, and therefore Alci we can drop it. It's just a waste of time. Alcibiades says, the, Alcibiades says that Agathon is the wisest man. Yeah, that's so true. in winning the tragedy, he has at least in one person's eyes the characteristic of wisdom. Okay, this is an example of how to read Plato now. If you can't make sense of that line, mm. you're missing a vital part of the whole mm. dialogue. You will not be able to see it until you see how it functions. Which line? Mm -hmm. See, banquet, banquet, banquet. Mm. Huh. Uh, and also oh, the, the dinner, oh, the dinner <clears throat> in the Homer as well, right? right. That's true. Okay, so that's another. That's topic. right. That's right. What? It's curious to me that he won't admit that he came uninvited. He, to the house of the good, the good may unbidden go. Yes, the old but he won't slave. admit it. Yeah, he does want to. Admit it. Yeah, it's important. Ag and Agathon you know, means good, right? Everybody should know that, right? right? Yes. Actually, we didn't talk about that. That's okay. Is that fair? Okay, now we're running over time. That's enough. Right. By the way, go back to where we were before. Is there something about these two introductions you find interesting? If so, what? Just at this point. Does it look like a thread is being woven with key ideas? Ah, elaborate details. 
Pardon me? There's elaborate details. Ah. Your task is to do not miss one line, one word. Fit it together in a mosaic tapestry. That's reading. See you next time. Mm -hmm.